A temple in my heart, a prayer in my soul, a song on my lips, and I sing to you. Baba Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, I sing to you. A light in my heart, a yearning in my soul, a song on my lips, and I call to you. Baba Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, I sing to you. Joy in my heart, peace in my soul, a smile on my lips, and I sing to you. Baba Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, I sing to you. It was in June 8, 1976, when I first had a contact with Sai through my auntie. We call her Chinnamma, that's my mother's younger sister. And she was a Baba devotee. And she's been called to meet a person called Mr. Raja from India, who was also a Baba devotee and who had some experiences. So she said, why don't you come and listen? I said, I'm not interested in this kind of things. You know? I was a bit actually very arrogant and uh, very uh, nasty about that. Uh, who's interested in you know, to listen? But I thought, anyhow, I'll come over because this man, Raja, had some <laughs> unusual experiences in the sense that he knew lucky numbers. So I thought, okay, let me go and pick up at least some lucky numbers. You know? Maybe useful for me. That was how the, I went to my auntie's house, was opposite my house. So when I went and started talking, and he was there. And we started our discussion. And the discussion went on, I became very hostile and very negative, you know, about Swami. And uh, I made fun of everything he said about Baba. I made fun. So that was the first contact with Baba through my auntie, my Chinnamma, Mrs. Kanagaratnam, you know, my, my neighbor, auntie. And uh, she will keep telling me, Jaya, don't make fun. Don't make fun of Baba. I said, who's making fun? I'm telling the truth, you know. So that was a very interesting beginning of my journey. So after some time, we, the discussion with Mr. Raja from India took place for about two and a half hours. So it's a long discussion, you know, and every time I'm teasing him, making fun. The arrogance was quite significant, okay? I can, I must admit myself, when I look back, I realized that I was very arrogant about it. But as the discussion went on, things began to materialize in front of me in terms of materialize in my mind that there is such a fantastic phenomenon going on, which I was not aware of. So at one point, my auntie told me that she has Baba's picture in her altar because she's got a nice prayer room. And Mr. Raja had brought and given her a picture of Baba. I said, where is this picture? Let me go and see. So I got up, you know, and swaggered to the prayer room. And there I saw a picture of Baba. And I looked at it and I said, I said, I think I told, told verbally, hey, not Baba, Bhagavan, nothing, you know, no. It's, hey, if you are what they say you are, Show me a sign, I'll believe. And that is when the first miracle in my life took place. Vibhuti appeared on Baba's picture. Instantly. Instantly, instantly. And I was stunned. What is this happening, you know? How is this happening? Because there's no inter anyone to interfere. It just, it just appeared like that, okay, Vibhuti? Right in front of your eyes. Right in front of my eyes, okay. You know, no one could have convinced me otherwise, you know? Baba had to come and knock me on the head, okay? And say, hey, here, something you can believe now. So when that f incident finished, I went back home and my mother, I went and sat down in my hall. My mother saw that I was a bit perturbed. In fact, the incident upset me, you know, because my entire uh, belief system had collapsed. You know, he is a person I defied and thought is not possible. Now suddenly he's appeared in front of me and made this miracle happen. So I I was a bit perturbed. 
And my mother said, hey, why don't you go, you look upset, why don't you go and pray? So I said, oh, uh, I'm not used to prayers, okay? So I said, ah, not necessary. But I sat there, then my wife would describe as a bubbling thing inside me, started to grow. Mm, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you couldn't hear the sound, but I could hear the feeling within me. And suddenly I, I realized that I've been confronted with a phenomenon that I've never realized possible. So that's what triggered off that first step into the Sai world phenomenon in my life. I went back to my own house and there was this uh, picture of, of my wife's, my mother's bed, uh, bedroom was the only place in my house where there was an altar, prayer altar. And mother had all the traditional Hindu forms there, you know. So I looked at it and I, s meantime inside me, there was this gurgling going on, okay, you know, very upset that Baba has done this to me, upset me. So upset you because you didn't understand how the Vibhuti Exactly, to... right. It is such a, a stunning thing for me that I didn't know what was happening, you know. And I don't like to know, I don't like to be in a situation where I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Anyhow, what uh, I had challenged him and he had responded to me. So I realized that there must be something going on that is uh, more than I can explain. So then, by, by that time, I was not singing any, I used to sing a lot of Western songs, okay? Elvis Presley, you know, the one through a party in the Kahori jail, that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, but now I never sang any, any Indian songs or God songs. Now suddenly I'm wondering, how did all these things happening, okay? So when I went back home, I was sitting there, I went to my mother's bedroom and I saw these three pictures with us, with, of Ramana Maharishi, uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Sai Baba. Three pictures, small pictures. Baba with his hands like this, like this. And I looked at the picture of Baba and it appeared as though he was mocking me, you know, you know. Oh. And I said, you know, now what? Now what? Like that was, was that question he seemed to be asking. <coughs> so I said, so I, 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 I said, what's happening to me, you know? Something's wrong with me now. Not something wrong with Baba, something wrong with me. <laughs> and then suddenly this first song, Baba's song, exploded from within me. The song go goes like this, it, just in Tamil, so that I'll translate in some of it. Bhagavan unnai teedu hindrin Iraiva unnai veendu hirin Veendu hol undu yengu hirin Un arul vendum naadu hirin. Shall I translate this now? Okay. So, Bhagavan unai teedu hindrin. I'm searching for you. Un arul vendum naadu hindrin. I'm yearning for, I'm yearning for you. Sai Baba unai keet kindrin. Sai Baba, I'm asking you. Keet adainiyum koduppayo. Will you give me what I ask for? Un arul vendum yengu hindrin. I'm yearning for your grace. Iraiva ni ingu varuvayo. Will you come to me? Come to me. And at that time, I could feel Swami telling, Yes, I will come. I will come. You call, I will come. So that was quite an interesting thing that happened. So then I finished that song. And my mother came into my room and, and I told my mother, My, my Tamil actually, now peep, I sing rather well and I seem to know Tamil. But those days I hardly knew much Tamil, but the song started coming in Tamil. And I didn't know how to control that song too much. So I told my mother when she walked into the, she saw me in the in her room, suddenly praying, you know, something she had not, not witnessed before. So I said, Amma, can you do me a favor? I said, what? She said, what? Yeah, can you translate this into English for me? So she took the pen and started translating the Tamil words into English so I can understand what I'm singing, okay? At that time, I didn't understand what I'm saying. Just the words were coming out of me. Then the period moved on, okay? Like the camera moving moving like that. Now I'm seeing now Baba everywhere. Wherever I am going, He seems to be there. When I'm driving my car, He'll be sitting by the, by the, by the 
and my seat beside, and passenger's seat beside. Now, in me, you may think it's imagination, but I'm seeing him sitting there beside me, you know. So I'm wondering what's happening. Then when I go jogging in, my, in the field, and he'll be jogging beside me, and he's wearing his his uh, long robe and jogging beside me, and he's keeping keeping in track with me, okay. So that kind of unusual things began to happen, okay. Meantime, every day, virtually every day, a new song would come, in Tamil or English. Among, among the songs that some people have heard now, uh, in English would be, Why fear when I am here? That song, one of the popular songs that came. And many other songs, you know, in English and Tamil. The Tamil songs were, were very powerful songs, okay. Then in October, I had to go to, I used to go to Europe very often for international business conference. I used to go with the ministers, you know. I was a senior officer in the Ministry of Industry in Malaysia. So every time I go, I'll ask my boss, come and get permission from my boss. And say, boss, boss, do you mind if I visit, take a few days leave and drop into India? He said, why? He said, I'll go and see Sai Baba. He said, okay, I think you're crazy, but now you carry on. So I went, I used to get leave like that and go and visit uh, as, uh, visit put up Shantin Lim. Then <laughs> there's a lady in Singapore, a Punjabi lady called Ragbir. I know whether you know her. Ragbir. Ah, Ragbir. So she, I was in this plane flying to, no, I think flying to India now because I'm going to visit put up first. And uh, she was sitting beside me in the plane. So I look. I was reading Baba's book. Okay. Suddenly I looked at her. As her. And she was holding in a hand, not a book, but just a picture of Swami. And she was looking at the picture, just staring at the picture, that's all. Said, Excuse me, you're going to see Swami, Satya Sai Baba? He said, no, I don't speak to strange men. She said, I said, okay, it doesn't matter. But anyway, I saw, I engaged in the conversation. And subsequently, we became very close friends, okay? Me and Rakbir. And, uh, and then she talked about Another lady, elderly lady that she knew, her name was Dadama. We call her elderly, called Dadama. So she told me, I tell you about this Dadama, she said. And we went, she told me about a lady, elderly lady, who's a very spiritual lady, and she would cook food for Baba and place it in front of him. Then she'll go away. When she comes back, half the food had been eaten already. And she really made eat the rest. So I, and she started telling me these kind of stories. So one day I decided to go to the house and witness it myself. And sure enough, you know, she'd cook and put the food and then we'll leave the room and then we'll see the food is half disappeared. So this kind of strange things began to happen. Things that defy normal explanation. So Baba came out around and he was talking to all the devotees who were sitting, the ladies and men. And I thought oh, this is a good chance for me to talk to Baba. So I went and I was sitting in the row also now. And Baba came, he walked along, and then he saw me, and I was thinking, so I was, now I'm preparing myself to address him. He comes directly in front of me, then instead of talking to me, he was talking to everybody else, you know. He swung around and went to the other person and bypassed me. Boy, that was a stunning uh, shock to me, you know. I started crying. Crying means how, you know, brother, not tears flowing. <laughs> like a baby was crying, you know, you know. I don't know what is happening to me, you know, that I'm crying like that. So then Baba, what, what Baba did was, he went to the fellow sitting next to me and told, uh, I whispered to him virtually, but I could hear what he's saying. He said, I will see you in Puttapati. I think I was the only fellow who heard it other than that, that guy. Then he walked away. I said, okay, he's going to Puttapati, I better go myself. So I packed up the next day and drove to Puttapati. You know that the boys' hostel in Whitefield, they were just building the hostel. Swami would come and inspect the building. People told me, Jai, Swami, you want to see Swami? Catch him when he comes out. So he stood there, and then he, I'm, I'm now in this gap here, and I'm sitting away, away from the people. Then he said something in Telugu. 
I didn't understand what he was saying. Then the moment I finished, he walked away, and then everybody started rushing towards me. Jaga, Jaga, what, what, did, what did Swami say? Who are you? Where are you from? I said, I'm from Malaysia. So what? What did, what did Swami say? Do you know what Swami said? I said, no, I don't know. He said, Swami said, I am in your heart and you are in my heart. So I said, that's a good one. <laughs> I thought that's a... I am in your heart and you are in you're my in heart. heart. Then he said, then he... Then what I thought to myself, okay, that's a better treatment than the first morning session. <laughs> you know, at least morning he totally ignored me. You know, at least he's saying this. So anyway, that finished, I t- packed my bag and drove to uh, Puttapati. Again, this incident happening in Whitefield again. Okay? So the next day I drove to Puttapati. There, big crowd, okay? Huge crowd. So I went and sat among the devotees there, I think. Then Swami comes out for darshan, and I am getting prepared to accost him, okay? And I am sitting there in the crowd. And then he comes to me, he looks at me and says, Hey, Malaysia, I got a shock on my life. Okay? How does he know I'm Malaysia? You know, because no one should know I'm Malaysian. Okay? Then he, he, that time I didn't know the meaning of the go. So he stood there and said, now go. So I stood there and think, go where? What is he talking about? Then the devotees, some of the older devotees, said, go, 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 Swami is calling for interview. Calling for interview? He said, yeah. Okay, so I got up and went. So we entered the interview room. And uh, in the interview room, both of us were standing all the time, the entire interview. Both of us were standing all the time. And this is what interesting thing happened. When I walked into the interview room, Swami came to me and he treated me as I would treat a six-year-old child. He hugged me, pinched my cheek, hit me on the head, you know, hit me on the back of my neck. Like a child, he played with me, okay? And I was with, taken aback, okay? For the first time, I understood the power of love, okay? Unconditional love. Because I didn't give, I'm not giving anything to Swami, just my love. And He was overpowering me with His love, okay? Then I felt so bad that I opposed Him over the, over the last months, okay? So I said, Swami, forgive me, Swami. Only a few months ago, I was a disbeliever. And Swami stood there and wagged His finger at me and said, Aha! Not only disbeliever, strong opposition, strong opposition, he said. I fell to the ground crying, okay. Crying with brother, not tears coming from the eyes. I'm sobbing like a baby, you know. <laughs> Shh, don't cry, don't cry. Swami knows everything. No, no, don't, not so loud. People outside will hear. <laughs> so that was a very interesting. So I Swami, what, uh, can I sing? You know, I got so many else. I gave us a little book. By the time I read these books, in a little booklet, Swami, I sing all these songs in Malaysia, uh, to your picture. Can I sing one song directly to you? No, no, not now. You come in the afternoon, bring all the other Malaysians with you. I said, Swami, I don't know I, I don't know any other Malaysian outside, because I'd gone alone, okay? No, no, that 32 Malaysians in the crowd. The funny thing is, whenever first time he I, he told me to don't talk to the Malaysians, he told me how many Malaysians were sitting outside. After that, every incident when he meet, meets me, he, he will say, okay, Jayago, uh, how many Malaysians he'll ask me? I said, Swami. Then he will tell me. I said, Swami, how many Malaysians, Swami? No, 32 Malaysians. He will tell me the number. First time he told me the number. After that, every subsequent, he will, I will ask him the question. And he will tell me how many outside. So that was when then I met these Malaysians. Okay, they all came and went for interview. So I was holding this book, you know, this my song book, which I written. Then I told Swami, bless, bless. He said, Jagdish, he said, I will bless. But you remember, but you remember, you are my instrument. Spread it, spread it, is it? So he's, he's telling me to spread the songs, okay, because I'm holding the book in front of me. Spread it, spread it. So, well, I took that as a signal, but I just kept quiet, okay, I didn't say anything else. So I went outside wondering, how am I to find all this? Such a big crowd, say, how am I to find a Malaysian? 32 fellows. I went outside, suddenly I'm standing on that first floor of the, of the second, story. And I'm standing there wondering, how Swami, what kind of assignment you given me? How about if I find the Malaysians in this crowd? Then suddenly I heard somebody, hey, Sairam, brother. I looked down and I see a group of Indian Indian looking guys. I said, we are all Malaysians. I said, well, how many of you? 
We are 30 hours, uh, 32 hours, sir. He said, I said, oh, good, good. Swami is called, want to see us for interview. So they were very delighted, okay. This fellow, this stranger suddenly telling us that Swami is calling for interview. So we all entered into the room, interview room. So we, we all entered there. And then immediately I went and sat on beside Swami's chair, you know, because he allowed that thing happen. The, the group, by the time they have some sort of respect for me, so they allowed me to go and sit in front. Then Swami looked at, looked around, asked, people are asking questions. And they were asking ridiculous questions, you know, you know. Swami, uh, when is my daughter going to get married? Uh, I'm looking for a job, Swami. I said, oh, what kind of question to ask God, okay? Coming, asking for a job interview. Blah, blah, blah. Then I suddenly paused for a while. And I thought to myself, this is very, those are very strange and meaningless questions. But I realized that when they are at home in front of their own altar, these are the questions they would ask God, okay? God, I need a job. Give my very simple questions, nothing profound. Okay, you know. So then I drew back my my uh, assurances. Okay, that they they were not very intelligent in the question they are asking in front of divinity. Okay, the next dramatic thing that happened. Swami looked at me in the afternoon in the afternoon session. He said, like this, I want you to go back to Malaysia and be the president of the Sevadal." Now, brother, that was a stunning thing because I didn't know what Sevadal meant. Because I'm not what I, in, the, in the Tamil stream, okay? So I was wondering, Swami, Swami, I'm very young, Swami. Please ask somebody elder, I said. <laughs> How to be Sevadal? What is Sevadal? First thing, I didn't know what is Sevadal. And second, he wanted me to be president of Sevadal. So please ask somebody elder. Then he turned to me, okay, now sing. So I sang. You know the song, right? Bhagavan unnai tede gindre. Sai Baba unnai ket gindre. I'm asking you, kete the niyum kodupai, will you give me what I ask for? And he is, he is busy signing some pictures. Kodupan, Kodupan. He said, I'll give, I'll give, he said. Then I got, I got a bit stunned, he suddenly interrupted my song. <laughs> then, unnaru vendum yengu gindre. Iraiva ni ingu varuvayu. I yearn for your grace. Will you come to me? Will you come? Irevan, where are you? Then he looked again. Verven, Verven. He said, I'll, I'll come, I'll come. So this too was a very in, significant incident during that interview session. And when that was over, everybody came out, everybody was clamoring around me and very happy that I was there. And it was a very nice incident. And But the in interesting thing is, those words which I said, will you, will you come to me? Will you give me what I asked for? Kodupan, Kodupan, I'll give, give. He actually made it happen. Because every time I was in a, in a need, not for personal need, you know, when I want to help someone, and I sing a, sing a song for the help of that person, uh, some, he will make something happen and they will receive whatever they want. Okay? So that came very popular. So I became quite popular that I'm <laughs> getting Swami to deliver some messages okay, like this. Serve all, listen to the call of the Lord. Of all, serve all, this is the call of the Lord. If you love the Lord, then you must love all. If you serve the Lord, then you must serve all. Love all, serve all, listen to the call of the Lord. Love all. So all, this is the call of the Lord. See no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, says the Lord. Think no evil, do no evil, love all, serve all, says the Lord. Love all, serve all, listen to the call of the Lord. Love all, serve all, this is the call of the Lord. Then the next amazing incident was I asked people, were there other Sai devotees around. They said, there's, in Malaysia, there's a pot, you know, called Port Klang. And they told me, in this Port Klang area, there was a, quite a large group of uh, 
the Indian devotees. So I said, arrange a meeting. I'll go and meet them. So people said, okay, Jaga. Now by now I was becoming quite a little bit of popular already because things are happening. So they arranged a meeting for me. So I went there, and there I went there. I thought here the prodigal son coming, and then now they're going to receive me with a warm welcome. But very hostile, cold treatment. So I just kept covered these guys, you know. I thought here they'll be greeting me like a prodigal son, and now very cold. So anyway, I just kept quiet. So they all sat down for bhajan. Then I, they no one asked me to sing, you know. And I'm dying to sing. So then I tapped the the leader who was there. I said, "Yes." He turned to me, "Yes." I said, "Brother, uh, can I sing a song?" Wait. That's it. So I, like a little boy, I just waited. Then suddenly he stopped and said, "Okay, now sing." In my mind, I was telling Swami, Swami, what Swami? You put me in this kind of funny situation where no one wants to listen to me. They all very hostile. Why you put me in this kind of situation? I'm asking mentally. Okay, I finish the song. Always those days they'll end the song super nice for him. So all super nice for him. Then we all got up and did arati, and then they asked me, "Jai, please do arati, sir." I was surprised. Suddenly, now the hostile thing became a very friendly, reverential greeting. I said, "Please do arati, sir." I said, "Okay." So I took the arati train. I was wondering what's happening now. Suddenly, they've changed their mind. Now, now instead of instead of hostile, they're very, very reverential. Is the word I can use. Then that finished, and then uh, uh, the food. They asked me to come and have a dinner with them. So I joined them for dinner. Then I asked the the leader of the group, "Hey, can you tell me one question?" He said, "What? Well, you see, when I first came, you all of you been hostile to me, you know. Now how come suddenly all of you are so friendly? Chika, didn't you see what happened? Huh? I said, 'What? I, I, when I sing, I sing with my eyes closed.' I said, 'When you were singing this so your song, the last song, the last word, huh? Sai Baba on my Kate Kendra and Kate that they need you, Kodupa, you will give. Unnarul veendum, yengi hi nam yen.'" Iraiva ni ing varu you come to me so when I sing Iraiva ni ing varu vayu Iraiva like a movie movie kind of thing no Iraiva ni ing varu vayu Bhagavan 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 and suddenly it seems that the big picture Baba with the rose garland around him and suddenly it is as though someone held the bottom of that of that garland and ripped it apart and all the roses just Fell down in 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 front of the picture. So they said, "Jaga, didn't you see what happened?" I said, "No." You know, then it, they told me what what happened. I said, "Okay." So they were sort of having a their budgets in a temporary kind of a shed kind of thing. You know, I said, "You guys, don't you have a center of your own?" So no, brother, I can tell you what. Let's build a center here. Now the place, very oddly enough, the name of that place was in Malay, in the Malay language. It's called Kampong Miskin. Kampong Miskin means Kampong is a village. Miskin is poor, poor village. So in that poor village, with the stevedores working together, they, I said, you, you all do. I will provide the materials. So I brought the wood, the wood and the wooden things and cement, and they built this shed. Really, a very, I mean, today if I look at it, it's a pathetic looking shed, but a shed it was. It is some place they all can convene. That became actually size first permanent structure in Malaysia. No other structure had been built earlier. Now the stevedores built the first structure. So that was a very nice, beautiful incident. Then I said, "Okay, we'll we'll who to launch that building?" I said, "Look, son, that time the minister of industry was a Muslim gentleman, and he is married to a European lady. So I said, we'll invite the minister, minister's wife." But she was quite close to me. I was very friendly with her. So he, yeah, I mean, invited her. She said, "Okay, I'll come." Of course, I told her, "Come, we're going to launch a building, you know, for you to officially open." She must have thought that it's a magnificent-looking structure. Little did she know that it's a wooden shed. <laughs> it's coming to open. So anyway, she flew in by helicopter to that environment. Of course, this impressed all the local people there. You know, minister coming, minister's wife coming. With heli by helicopter, you know, and then she came in and she was. I th- I th- she didn't express any verbal surprise, but I could see like a look in her eyes, you know, what the hell? I mean, never mind. She, anyway, she was very obliging. She came and launched it. 
So now we are we all sitting down having a bhajan inside the building, inside our new newly constructed prema nilayam. Prema means love, you know, love, love building. And as we are singing, suddenly everyone observed a snake, you know, coming into the building. They they say it's a cobra. I wasn't too sure. I didn't see exactly what it was. They come and the snake went up the end of the building and went to the altar on top of the altar and was on top of the picture on the altar, you know. And as we are singing the song and clapping, the the snake kept <laughs> kept dancing, you know, with, with the song. Okay, that was a very moving incident. Okay, to see a snake coming in and doing that. Then the bhajan over the snake went down and disappeared. After we no one no one saw the snake again. So that was had impressed further impressed the devotees that this Jagadishan is not too bad. I know he's got something interesting to offer. So then I told them, look, let's do something instead of just singing bhajans. Let's do seva. They all agreed. So then I formed what is called an ISD, informal seva dal. Since Swami said, do this. So the first Sevadal group in Malaysia was in this Kampong Miskin, a poor village. The Stevedos formed the first integrated Seva group. So that was one doctor. One day he comes to my house, and he is desperate because sometimes I think he and his wife had this argument, and she left the house. Now she is missing. They went on looking for her. They could not find. Like, no one could tell where she was. So he comes to me, Jaga. My wife is missing. She got angry at me. She left the house. I said, Yeah, okay. So what do you mean do? Can you help me to find her? So I said, Okay. So let's go and look around, lah. So I said, Let me pray to Swami. Uh, okay. Always I had to pray to Swami. So I I stood went to the window of Swami's altar and I prayed. And suddenly, I saw a flash, and I saw this lady. There's a lady with a white hair, long hair, long hair, and uh, this. Uh, and beside her was the wife. They had gone and asked that lady, "Have you seen the wife?" He said, "No, I've not seen her." But actually, she had kept the lady in the house, in her own house. So she was trying to scare the husband. I think I know whatever she did. So then. I called doctor. Doctor, listen. This happened. I this I saw this vision. I don't know how true it is, but I think you must go to the house. No, we already went to the house and asked the lady. She said she hasn't seen her. I said, brother, I don't know, but I think we should go. We're going to ask again. So we went to the house again, and we knocked at the door, and she opened the door, and there, standing behind her, was the wife. And so that was another um, real miracle. Okay. Okay, by then they patched up and you know, they became good again. So that's the second major incident in my initial adventure with Swami. Then came the another one. Now this doctor one day brought his Chinese friend to my house, a portly gentleman, and uh, <clears throat> introduced me. You know this Jaga. So I was sitting in my, I was standing in my living room, and on my walls there were all God pictures, you know. So this man walks in, and George Hang, and he looks around like this, looking at all the pictures. He must think, "What a jaga fella, crazy fella, you know, having all these pictures." He must have been thought he didn't say anything. And then, after that incident, uh, ah, then a few days later, a few days later, I hear somebody honing outside my house, pom pom pom. I opened my window, upstairs window. I looked down. I saw this Chinese gentleman standing in front. I said, "Who? Who is that?" I said George. George what? George Hang. So who are you? I'm a doctor's good friend. I said, "Oh, I thought, I thought something happened to the doctor, you know, for this man to come at this hour and disturb me." So I rushed downstairs and opened the door. Then he told me the story that his shop, he has a sports shop. He's selling sports equipment again, okay. and a fire had got got started in the neighboring shop, and the fire was blazing out of control. Fire engine came, but they could not raise water, so now he was desperate now. So he he realized that nothing could be done. Okay, but he, he can't go inside the wall. 
and stop the fire. So he in desperation, I don't know what made him do this. He got into his car and drove away from the scene because he didn't want to stand and watch his prized possession, his shop of all the equipment again to be destroyed. So he got into drove away. And instead of going to do- the doctor's house, which is his close friend, which is quite near, near, near to my house, he drove to my house. Why he drove to my house, I'm not too sure, you know. Then he, he, he told me, Jaga, this is what happened in my shop. I said, what, what can we do? He asked me. I said, don't worry, la, brother. I said, insurance will, insurance will pay. If, actually, by the time he had calmed down a bit, if I'm just crying, okay, insurance will pay. Then the moment I said insurance will pay, he started crying again, bawling, really crying loudly, you know. He was an adult fellow, you know, quite a... I said, yes, now... He said, Jaga, I've written the check to send to the insurance company, but the check is on my table. I haven't sent it yet. Then I finished, like, what else can I do, you know? If, 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 you, if you haven't sent your check to insurance, then nothing anyone can do. So I said, anyway, come like you stand here and you pray. To Baba, ask Baba's help. So I said, listen, but in asking Baba to help you to stop that fire or whatever to do, what is the gift you will give him? I asked. He said, what can I give? How much money, how much should I, how much money should I give? I said, not money. Tell, tell me or tell Baba now, what are the negative things you do in your life? and give up the negative. And for that, ask the positive, that is the, the, the stop the fire. So he stood there, and he must, then he stood there, and stood there and started mumbling something. I said, tell loudly. Must tell loudly, yeah. I said, yeah, tell loudly. So he said, no, 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 please, Baba, help me stop the fire. He used to control a gambling syndicate, because the Chinese were involved in gambling. So I said, okay, then you tell Baba, you'll give up this gambling, and don't, don't encourage more gambling. The negative thing, you know. So he said, okay, okay. And then he said to Swami, I, I, I'll give up gambling, I'll stop gambling. Please help me, Swami. Save me from this fire. So he called his wife. Like, you know, I still remember I'm standing beside him. Our shop, you know. Our shop, you know. He kept repeating, our shop, you know. Our shop, you know. All destroyed by fire. Then she said, hold on, hold on. Somebody has come to her door in his house, you know, which is away from... And somebody comes, so she went to open the door. She realized somebody's come, she went to the door, and then she took the phone again. Then he continued, our shop, you know, shop is totally destroyed by fire. Look, I'm watching this incident. Huh? Then he says, what? Are you sure? Who told you? Who told you? He started crying again. I said, what happens now? Shop is destroyed already. What are you crying some more? Chega, as I'm talking to you, as I was talking to you, one of my shop, one of my staff had come to my house and told my wife that there was a big fire. But just as the fire was raging, suddenly the fire stopped. So the house is, the shop is untouched. I said, wow, let's go and see. So we got in the car and we drove to the shop. And so the shop was the shop beside his was, was burnt. His shop was untouched, no smoke, nothing. He said, Jaga, I want to help you. You Sai Baba people, I want to help you, Sai Baba. I said, how? You got your officer, you got a Sai Baba officer. I said, no, we haven't got an officer, we're looking for them. I tell you what, I give you one room in my, in, my shop, in my shop building. You can use that room as your Sai Baba center. So that we got a free center. <laughs> yeah, the way that the day that, that council office we opened, Baba's Vibhuti came on the pictures in his in his shop again. So that was another dra- dramatic miracle. Okay. So th- th- these miracle stories, brother, are, are, are unbelievable kind of stories. You know, you, know. you say fire is burning and suddenly the fire stops. You know, and then then the, the, his wife missing and suddenly we found her. Okay, let me tell you one story related to the World Youth Conference. 1997. 1997. Huh? 1997. So what happened was that everybody we invited a lot of people around the world from India and other places. So many of them came for this World Youth Conference. And uh, our challenge was to create a nice environment 
good ideas and good thing enough for youth to inspire the youth okay so i was one of the key keynote speakers so the indian youth were there with us and uh, <clears throat> they told me jaga we must thank you i said for what because of you we were given many interviews by swami i said because of me tell me what how how i so like to give some interviews <laughs> then he said you know you know you came to you in the world youth conference you told about a story how you inspired a lot of people to do seva and so we decided to follow likewise so we started doing seva and as we started doing seva more and more seva are done and baba began to invite us for interviews so i see is it what because you did seva swami sir interview yeah so many interviews swami gave us i said my that's a very good sign so let me tell see how i was again good seva i was already doing a lot of seva but no how to have additional seva is so then i what uh, they told me tell me what happened they i to ask them they said you know we are doing a lot of seva and swami called us for interview and said no those days i tell you all do seva you all don't do much seva now how come suddenly you all doing so much seva no swami this jagadish and fellow what did jagadish and do he said he he inspired us to do seva so we started doing a lot of seva and the more seva we did the more you you inter- invited us for interview swami the son i am a small spotlight okay who is who is motivating you all to do this so that's only thing is happening because of swami's inspiration i began to and now you are following an example so that was a very beautiful episode where swami's boys come and tell me that you inspired us to seva <laughs> in white field i bought some japa malas you know, from all the shops outside so then i took it interview swami called me definitely i knew you i know those days when i'm there swami will call me for interview everybody expects that so i also expected that lena and surely swami swami did now less and less okay by least those days he will call uh, and i took this japa mala with me and went to see swami swami please swami please bless this jamala so swami took the jamala in his hands okay swami will bless then i said ah swami can i put this one jamala on you he looked at me and smiled then he did this you know very beautiful scene he bent down like this and i put the jab one jamala on him. as i put the jabmal on him my fingers grazed his hair you know so i could feel his hair all touching my fingers okay and then he bent down like that. then as he finished bending down he suddenly started to go getting up and as he started getting up brother i saw into the swami's face a female face coming up like a bright you know like a fee, like a, is not a male face a fee female beautiful female face coming up so he leaned back like that then he was smiling then he he lunged back in his chair and took that gallon i had put on him the jamala and threw it and the jamala shh, and landed on me oh wow <laughs> it was a beautiful scene okay uh, okay that that was the incident that happened it was a dramatic scene but the beautiful thing was when i when he started raising his hand i saw the I was amazed what the stuff what is female face coming up okay then he laughed because he realized i'd seen the face okay and he threw the thing and the mala, mala came and dropped on me and that was a beautiful incident a beautiful one of the darshan of incident, huh? it's a beautiful darshan yes correct fantastic darshan fantastic darshan la <laughs>